Hi there, it's Dr. Bernstein and in this video I'm going to teach you how to modify quotes and how to use long quotes in your papers. So um, sometimes you're going to come across quotes that have the, the quotes have really good information but there's some things in the quote that you might want to leave out that information might be distracting it might not be relevant to your key point so you can shorten the quote to make it fit the context of your sentence now obviously you can't manipulate your source into saying something that he or she is not really trying to say and the quote will have to be able to make sense to the reader with those missing words um, but when you want to leave out words you can do so by using what are known as uh, ellipsis marks and ellipsis marks are three periods uh, that's what you see in the parentheses there there are three periods that are pr preceded and followed by a space you should use ellipsis marks, obviously, as I said, when leaving out information within a quote, but don't use them at the beginning or end of a quote. So I'm going to show you some examples right now. So here you have the original quote, it's from King, nonviolent direct action seeks to create such a crisis and establish such creative tension that a community that has consistently refused to negotiate is forced to confront the issue. So here's an example of how you can shorten the quote using ellipsis marks. King points out that the purpose of, so there's your signal phrase, that the purpose of nonviolent direct action, and here I'm showing you actually how you can um, pull out specific parts and break up the quote within your sentence so that it flows smoothly. I'll read it again. King points out that the purpose of nonviolent direct action is to create such a crisis and establish such creative tension that a community ellipsis marks is forced to confront the issue. Now I'm imagining in this situation maybe the author had already talked about how the community has already refused to negotiate and doesn't want to repeat that information. So you can use the ellipsis marks when you're leaving out information within the quote. You don't want to use it, you'll see the wrong use of ellipsis marks in the bottom example, um, at the beginning or end of a quote. King points out that the purpose of nonviolent direct action is dot 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 to create such a crisis. That's incorrect. You only use the ellipsis marks when you're leaving out information within the quotes. Now sometimes you might in order to make something fit smoothly within the context of your sentence or if the quote contains like a reference that the reader might not understand. If you need to add some information, you can do so by putting brackets around the words to indicate that they are not part of the original text. And so I'm giving you an example that's taken directly from the owl. I didn't put quotation marks around the example because that would be confusing. But here is an example of how to use the brackets when you're adding words. Jan Harald Brunvand, in an essay on urban legends, states some individuals, and then you get the brackets, who retell urban legends make a point of learning every rumor or tale. And I'm guessing that the person wanted to add who retell urban legends so that the reader understands what the who these individuals are. It's not just people in general, but it's a particular group of individuals. Okay, now I want to draw your attention to one of the most powerful sentences in King's letter from Birmingham jail, and I bet most of you underlined part of the sentence or all of it. It's on page two, and it is a, it's a 318 word sentence. The preceding sentence is, I guess it is easy for those, of, for those who have never felt the stinging darts of segregation to say, wait. But when you have seen vicious mobs lynch your mothers and fathers at will and drown your sisters and brothers at whim, when you have seen hate-filled policemen curse, kick, brutalize, and even kill your black brothers and sisters with impunity,
when you see the vast majority of your 20 million Negro brothers smothering in an airtight cage of poverty in the midst of an affluent society, when you suddenly feel your, find your tongue twisted and your speech stammering as you seek to explain to your six-year-old daughter why she cannot go to the public amusement park that has just been advertised on television and see tears welling up in her little eyes when she is told that fun town is closed to colored children and see the depressing clouds of inferiority begin to form in her little mental sky and see her begin to distort her little personality by unconsciously developing a bitterness toward white people when you have to concoct an answer for a five-year-old son asking in agonizing pathos, Daddy, why do white people treat colored people so mean? When you take a cross-country drive and find it necessary to sleep night after night in the uncomfortable corners of your automobile because no motel will accept you. When you are humiliated day in and day out by nagging signs reading white and colored. When your first name becomes nigger and your middle name becomes boy, however old you are, and your last name becomes John, and when your wife and mother are never given the respected title Mrs., when you are harried by day and haunted by night by the fact that you are a Negro, living constantly at tiptoe stance, never knowing what to expect next, and plagued with inner fears and outer resentments, when you are forever fighting a degenerating sense of nobodiness, then you will understand why we find it difficult to wait. Uh, so that's really a, one of the most powerful sentences in King's letter. And part of the power comes from how long it is. You really get this feeling of the sort of the intensity the, of the experience, the way it sort of, it, there's, you feel like you can't get in or out of the sentence. Um, the way you can't get out of this experience and that it's not just happening to one group of people it's happening to mothers fathers sisters brothers um, daughters sons husbands wives I mean every part of the community is affected um, and so a lot of times people want to quote from this sentence and you can't in a in a 500 word summary you cannot use a quote that's this length it's just it's too long for that type of for this type of essay so you might need to um, pare it down and I want to teach you some strategies for doing that and this could happen with other essays as well so I'm going to show you now so when you want to condense a long quote, one of the most effective ways of doing it is setting up the context of the quote by paraphrasing um, and, then, um, and then select key phrases to integrate into your sentence or sentences. So I'm just giving an example, um, like if I were writing a summary, I would just choose the like three or four most powerful phrases and then paraphrase the rest. So choose the most powerful phrases to direct quote and then paraphrase the rest of the information. And this is just a sample uh, of something I came up with. In order to help the clergyman understand why it is so hard for the African American community to continue waiting to rid themselves of the disease of segregation, King composes a 318 word sentence that makes them feel the pain of this prejudice. So what I'm doing in that first sentence is sort of setting up the context and giving the reader a sense of, wow, what makes this sentence so special is that it is so long and it makes them feel the pain of this um, disease. And so I just selected a few quotes, but you know, you could choose other ones. He describes what it is like to see hate-filled policemen curse, kick, brutalize, and even kill your black brothers and sisters with impunity, and how the depressing clouds of inferiority begin to form in children's minds when they learn they cannot go to amusement parks because of the color of their skin. Um, so that is there's actually a mistake here there should not be a, there should not be a quotation mark after skin I apologize for that mistake which I just caught now um, so that gives you a sense of how you can condense quotes so that they you're not using a really really long quote when you don't really have the space for it 
However, there might be a time, especially when you're doing your research project or your, your research essay, where you might have the space and the time to use a long quote. So if you use a quote that extends beyond four lines, start the quote on a new line, double indent the entire quote, and leave out the quotation marks. You should also put the period at the end of your quote and then add the parenthetical citation. So let me show you an example of this. So you'll see, you should never start a paragraph with a quote, but I'm just pulling this out to show you how to set it up format wise. So you indent once, you indent once in order to start a new paragraph. Um, and, but you want to double indent so that the reader knows, wait, this isn't a new paragraph, it's a quote. And you'll notice that you start the quote on a new line, even if this line doesn't go all the way to the end. You start it on a new line, it's all double spaced, you don't put quotation marks around the text because the reader knows from the double indenting that you are direct quoting. And then you put the period at the end of the sentence and then the parenthetical citation. This is different because with short quotes, you don't put the period here, you put it after the parenthetical citation. I am not really clear um, why that's the case. So now you have some really basic uh, strategies for using quotes and modifying them in your papers. If you have any questions, feel free to um, post them on our discussion board.